All right, so this short video is to talk about immediately invoked function expressions. Now, before we get into exactly what those are, there's a few concepts that we have to really make sure that you understand. When you're creating functions, there's two different ways that we can do it. This first way, line four, is a function declaration. So self-contained, here's the name for the function, and this is all the code that would be inside of here. If we have no return statement inside here, then the function will return the value undefined. Um, the second one here, this is a function expression. So we have an anonymous function here, which can be run. And this is the variable that's holding this function. So if I were to put a return statement inside of here, let's say I'm returning true, then this value would get passed back into here after this function runs. So down below here, I've got a couple of examples. If I just wrote do something, perfectly valid, there's nothing wrong with this syntax, but it's not going to do anything. It's just like saying Bob, somebody's name. This one, however, with the brackets at the end, with the parentheses at the end, this is actually going to make the function run. So this will run. Uh, we have no return statement, so the value of undefined is being passed back here. Second one here, something else. I'm just saying the name of a variable. Again, it doesn't really do anything. It's just a perfectly valid piece of syntax. The second one, however, this is where we're actually telling this function to run. And we've got this return value that will be passed back. Now, we're not passing it into anything. And that's where the IIFEs come in. If I were to put the parentheses at the end here, just like this, I want to actually try and make this function run right away. Now, in order to do that, I have to put parentheses around the whole function. And then this set of parentheses makes the function run. I can do the same thing here. Wrap the parentheses around my function. And then I add a second set at the end. This is going to make my function run. So var something else got hoisted to the top. And then when it got to this line of code, it said, oh, OK, there's a function inside of here. And I'm supposed to run that. This function would run, and this return value would get passed into something else. So I can return uh, a number. I can return a Boolean. I can return a string. You know, anything you want, including objects. So I could have an object inside of here that I'm going to be passing back. Inside of here, there can be parameters. Like this. Anything that you would return from a function can all be packed inside of a, an object. So to do this, now I'm just going to comment these out because we're not using these right now. And I don't want to confuse this issue. This right here, this is an immediately invoked function expression. With the parentheses wrapped around the function, the extra set of parentheses at the end is telling it to run. And if we were to pass something in, so let's say I passed in the string Bob, I can put a variable here, and that would catch this variable. So this is now a parameter for this function. And I can use it inside of here. There we go. Now I'm taking this string and I'm putting it into here. And then it's being used here as part of the return value. Following this line, immediately after this line, because this immediately ran, this return object got passed into here. So if I was to say console log something else, I can access name and ID. You can see by my code complete here, I'm getting the option to have name or ID. Those values were returned from this function and passed into this object. So they became parameters of this object. And that is an immediately invoked function expression. 
you'll often see these things being used to create sort of modules within your code. I'm basically creating a namespace. Inside here I've got these properties that are protected. They're like variables, but they're protected inside of this. And as long as nobody else uses this name, something else, my variable names will not conflict with somebody else's. We could also do things like this. I can create a function. That's part of my returned object. So now x is a function inside of something else. So I could write something else dot x, and that would run whatever this function was. So there's a little bit of value attached to the idea of an immediately invoked function expression.